Greetings, nerds. This is Zena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing good. I mean, I thought I had a weird week, but you were filling me on everything that's happened to you within the last 48 hours, and I'm like, <laughs> yep, it's never comparable. <laughs> <laughs> Air travel's always, like, crazy, so don't want to bore our listeners with with that one. We've got quite a bit of topics to get to tonight with uh, with Fallout and X-Men 97 and all the news that uh, that's dropped today and yesterday. So because you told me that other stuff has happened, I'm not sure what what we're talking about during the news section. So why don't you just go with what you want to talk about? Because I think our most of our listeners understand by this point that our news session is just Will telling me what's happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, quite a few things have happened. I mean, I know for I don't have this on the rundown, but I know uh, a lot of folks were very excited about Michelle Yeoh being cast as the lead in the uh, Blade Runner 2049 sequel, Blade Runner 2099. Uh, it's going to be uh, on Amazon. It's uh, it's a series that she was, that was just dropped. I want to say that happened Tuesday or Wednesday of this week, but uh, definitely a lot of buzz there. But of course, I think the the week started out with the uh, reveal of the Superman suit. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to see the David Corn sweat in his, in, in the new so I don't, I have the weirdest sense of deja vu because I feel yeah. like we talked about this last week. No, but you're telling me it happened this week. Okay. It happened, yeah, it it, it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it happened. Yeah, it was Monday. Maybe that's why you're feeling like it was deja vu. Yeah, yeah, I saw it. It looks like Superman. I I don't know. It was just an image, and I'm just like, cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you're. I guess you have a very. I don't. I don't, I don't I won't put words in your mouth. It just uh, sort of muted response. I guess <laughs> I know a lot of folks were. Uh, you know, it was one of those things. I wanted to put it on just because one. I did. I actually like the suit, and I like. I, and I like the vibe more more than the suit. I just like the vibe that James Gunn was attempting to give off there, mm-hmm. more so than the suit itself. I mean, the suit itself was like, okay, yeah, it, you know, it's this kind of new fifty two. It's got the armor. You know, the trunks have returned, so, you know, the, the red trunks are back. But uh, more was just a vibe that I was that I was getting with, you know, with tone of what what we've understood about Gunn's take on this character. And that was really what stuck out to me more was just sort of like, OK, another day at the office, every man, Superman, he's lived in this world. The suit's not all nice and, you know, nice and clean. I mean, it looks, you know, it's got some dirt on it and stuff. So. You know, he's been doing this for a while. And and then also I thought I couldn't help but think about uh, Krypton, the TV show that we really enjoyed uh, with the image in the background there. Maybe that might be Brainiac or something. But, you know, that's that's what I those, those are more the things I got from that image more so, so than the suit itself. So what else what else happened this week? Yeah. So also this week, um, Bob Iger. uh fleshed out what he meant earlier, which maybe that's where you get the deja vu from uh, with the Marvel schedule. He had played, he had intimated before in some calls that they were going to start reducing output. And this week he uh, put some numbers to it uh, where he was basically saying that we'll do three movies per year and uh, two TV shows per year. And what's notable about it is I guess this must be like projecting down the line because pre- pretty much in 25 and 26 things, you know, they've already like slated out like a bunch of movies. And I think next year, I think four movies are coming out. So at least as it's currently s- scheduled. So, um, and, and, and so that was, that was something that came out of the earnings call earlier this week with the, uh, with, with the Disney investors. So we'll see what happens there. Yeah, yeah. Um, two fantastic forecastings happened today. Ralph Inson as Galactus and John Malkovich as an undisclosed role. That was some hot. That was some things that broke late this afternoon. Uh, Ralph Inson uh, as a Galactus, I think, 
many folks, I know even I know John Roca and Jeff Snyder have been talking about this casting for a while. I know Jeff had mentioned possibly Javier or Bardem as a possible candidate for Galactus, but uh, yeah, they went with uh, with uh, Ralph Ineson, who has actually been in the MCU before. As I was looking at his IMDb this evening before uh, recording the show, uh, he was a uh, Guardians of the Galaxy as a background character. Uh, so he's, but um, yeah, he's, he's, he, he is, he is confirmed as Galactus. And uh, of course, Fantastic Four is supposed to come out next year. So we'll see if that, that does indeed happen. And then John McElvitt, uh, yeah, was also cast today. And also Paul Walter Hauser has been cast in that, um, in, in Fantastic Four as well. Uh, and so with, Paul Walter Hauser, I think he's been cast in everything, it seems like, these days. But I think people suspect he's probably going to be Mole Man. And Malkovich seems that he you know, he could be a villain, but also I've seen some speculation that he could be Herbie, the robot. So we'll see what happens there. Um, Andy Serkis is set to direct and star in a new Lord of the Rings movie, The Hunt for Gollum. And this just leads me to question, so is... Amazon still doing a season two of Lord of the Rings. This, this, they are planning. They're still doing the Rings of Power season two. Okay. This one is not related to that though. This was well, actually, yeah. yeah I mean, yeah, the original yeah. franchise wasn't really related to it either. To an extent, they couldn't say certain names and everything. Right. Yeah. That, yeah. It gets into the, all the complicated rights issues that we discussed right. some time back. Yeah. yeah. But no. But this is, um, this is from Peter Jackson. Um, well. The, yeah. And that's why you got Andy Circus. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh-huh. So, yeah. So, yeah, this was a uh, part of the Warner Brothers Discovery, uh, I guess, their investor call, or maybe it was leading up to their upfronts. But in any event, uh, that was this was announced this morning. And, um, yeah, Andy will, is going to be in that role. Peter Jackson and the team is all, the gang's getting all back together. He's Jackson's going to produce this film. Uh, slate it to... Uh, come out in 2026, and uh, yeah, it's so a part of a, I think a, a new series of um, Lord of the Ring proper, you know, films that uh, Warner Brothers Discovery is looking at, and really consistent with what David Zaslav, the CEO, has, has said. They've got all this IP, and they really want to they want to make a, make make a buck off of it. So <laughs> this is this is the start of that for sure. Well, they can certainly try. Yeah. Uh, and also during that call, it came out that Disney and Warner Brothers are teaming up to create a streaming bundle package with Hulu, Disney Plus, and Max. Yep. yep. And we yep. all screen with joy, kind <laughs> of, even though we don't know pricing. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll get pricing. So this 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 is going to drop this summer. So we should be getting some pricing info. It'll have a, a, a both an ad tier and a non-add to your bundle uh I, I couldn't help when i saw this news i couldn't help but think about uh uh our conversation i think last week or week before whenever we started x-men <laughs> you were like fussing about the uh you know trying to get your service like log back on but yeah this is uh this is this is pretty game changer in some regards uh i, I know verizon has had a netflix and i think max bundle but 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 Disney's always been kind of the holdout as far as wanting to do this, but given that I think all the streaming services have really, other than Netflix, have not turned a profit, I think are losing money. Um, well, you know, as these with these quarterly calls with investors, I think they're like, okay, we gotta, we gotta rethink it, but we gotta rethink this. So this, this is coming. Um, Matt Reeves' series Batman: Cape Crusader is coming to Amazon on August first. Yeah, so I think we had talked about this some time back, but we we did get the release date for all 10 episodes that will be dropping on Amazon on August 1st. This is a joint effort with Matt Reeves and also J.J. Abrams is also a part of this and uh, Bruce Tim, Trim, who uh, did the Batman, the, orig- the animated series back in the day, I think is also a part of this project. So uh, we did get some images. For, I think the Amazon drop today, I think, as they are getting close to the to the upfronts, which uh, it is May. So we're probably going to be getting a lot of these, t- a lot of news over the next few weeks uh, as the uh, 
streaming services and networks uh, have all their uh, upfronts where they you know, roll out their upcoming items and uh, you know, especially to try to say set ad rates and that kind of stuff. So uh, this was one of the ones that came out today. Nice, nice. Um, and last but not least, season three of The Bear will premiere on June 27th. Yep, that was Jeremy Allen White dropped uh, on his uh, on his Instagram uh, his you know little teaser trailer, uh, uh, and and did get the date for the show and also all the episodes are going to drop on release day, so they, they won't be doing a week to week. It'll it'll be another. Have uh, they ever done week to week? They have not. All uh, all three seasons yeah. have been um, same day. Yeah, that's what I thought. I always come late to it, but yeah. yeah. They, I've, I didn't, I, ne- I never thought that they did um, a week to week. So, yep. Awesome. All right. Well, that brings us to X Men 97, Season 1, Episode 2, Mutant Liberation Begins, where basically Magneto is trying to play good guy. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> trying to play, well, he's not even trying. He, this episode is just basically. Viewers like the X Men themselves are just questioning uh, Magneto's real intentions, and of course, the writers try to make it seem like he's gonna go, he's gonna pull a Magneto trick mm-hmm. along the way. Um, but in the end, he he basically just says, "I I take the responsibility that Charles gave me very seriously because this is his life work now." If how long will that last? We'll see. We got we got eight episodes to go after this one, so we'll see. Um, will what what were some of your takeaways over this episode? Yeah, my initial thoughts is that uh, it, it, it definitely built on the, the the prior episode. Really, um, as we get deeper into what Charles had intended, which was Magneto to take over and. Uh, and you're right. I mean, they did do a good job of like, okay, when is that? When is that? When is the other the heel turn going to happen? I mean, he's supposed to, he's playing this good guy now, but you know, but like Scott and and the rest of the team, I was just like, yeah, come on, what's going to? Nah, it's, so, something's going something's going to happen. And and but um, but I, I really did enjoy it. And another thing too that I really picked up even more this episode than the last is just we are set in the '90s. You know, they they make they still kept it very period with you know even like having you know, TV sets you know and 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 just the things around it, but you know beyond just the the anime, animation aesthetic, but also just within the show itself. But uh, the cool thing, I, but I, I liked it, but they didn't like make it all like self referen- referential as far as like yeah we're back in the nineties or anything like that. It was just like you know things are happening and you know and, and you're just watching you know watching a period piece. Um, hmm. but, uh, yeah, that was, those are some of my initial thoughts about the episode. In the episode, um, during the third act big mm-hmm. fight, um, Storm gets hit by, um, the executioner's gun, mm-hmm. um, and, and ends up losing her powers, which they suspect will be permanently. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see, yeah. <laughs> So what what was your thought about that um, little plot line? Yeah, that was a very shocking moment for sure when she you know she stepped in front of the in front of the laser blast intended for effect for Magneto and you know and again just you know it's the heroic thing but the kind you know but the thing that was so I won't say it was telegraphed but now that I, you know but it was it was set up to, to for something like this to happen because. Earlier in the episode, Storm and and Jean have a have a discussion um, yeah. about you know the the team motherhood you know finding a place in this world bringing in a child you know and, and you know and I, what I, other thing I didn't say in my opening thoughts is I really like how they're you know really just putting it out there like all the issues in a grown up way. Um, in this show as far as the prejudice and some of the philosophical questions about art, you know, the mutants place in, in a world that, you know, many people hate them. And, 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 and of course, you know, part of Magneto's trial is, is 
taking responsibility for for what they perceive as his you know for his crimes or for that you know in, in addition to you know all the things that are playing around in that with some of the you know groups that are forming so when that happened and then after she lost her powers and and and, and lost the thing that made her feel special it really you know you know it really got into the questions of identity and who we are and who you know what makes you you and and, and that was you know whenever she left the team and even though they were like you have a place here but she's like i don't feel like i have i belong anymore i mean it was it was a lot it was a lot tied up into that into that the arc there with that with her losing her powers yeah yeah it definitely was and you're right it was a bit telegraphed but i think overall that's my my one gripe about the show and and maybe it's because i'm older now and i've seen a lot more but i feel like a lot of what they're doing mm-hmm. i mean you brought up like philosophical feels telegraphed and there's there's not enough subtlety mm-hmm. happening for me um and and i mean like i said it's it could be because this genre has evolved so much since the 90s and and people are more familiar especially with these characters and we know we got a movie in our future and it just i wish that there was more subtleness um in in those higher thinking parts i mean i um honestly to your earlier part part i didn't even think about it about how this is a period piece it is clearly set in the 90s but that didn't resonate with me at all until you mentioned and i'm like oh yeah so i guess there is some subtleness that i'm not picking up on um but the overall story beats and and plots that have been occurring i'm like okay i mean the one subtle thing is okay what's going on with eric and yeah. and rogue um eric aka magneto but i do vaguely remember from the original series like she spent a lot of time with him and um blanking on her name I'm blanking on blue lady's name oh, mystique? yeah mystique yeah. so i know that there was something but i'm not really sure if that's a consistent thread to what they're pulling out now or not Mm -hmm. um do you have any idea i i don't i i I had actually forgotten that uh rogue and 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 eric had a had a little prior prior fling back in the day um Mm -hmm. and so but it is to your point about storytelling and and putting things on the nose so you know we're very familiar with the wolverine um gene scott triangle so now it looks like they're now we're now we're gonna have another story here of another triangle in this show as far as gambit potentially magneto and rogue potentially so you know so i'm like it's too so to your point about sometimes being a little bit too direct um yeah they it could have like i don't know i mean it, well the it, hard thing the hard thing about love triangles yeah um, and I'm actually glad that they're not going all in on the whole Cyclops, Jean Grey, Wolverine, and a bit all. I mean, it's there, but it's also not present, like right. like shoved down your throat. Mm-hmm. Um, is that you have to at least watch their relationships. And because of the way they've approached this series, we we haven't seen Jean, like Rogue and Gambit flirt that much we haven't even seen like why he is infatuated with her Mm -hmm. and now we're also being shown oh there's a competitor that for her affection that goes back to a secret and we don't know about the secret so we're left here just being like okay so we see the triangle but it doesn't really mean anything to us as a viewer because we haven't watched the romance we haven't watched the understand why there's connections that are creating this triangle. Yeah. 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 And maybe, and maybe that was it. I mean, I think, um, maybe it's just, as we're getting back into this universe and, and things uh, getting re- you know familiar with these characters that, that for many of us haven't 
watched them in a very long time, at least in this, at least in this story. I mean, I know a mm-hmm. lot of folks have read the comics, but um, yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I mean, they are sort of set, setting the groundwork for something, but, you know, but there's nothing to really, I guess, at this point, there's nothing to really get invested in <laughs> because mm-hmm. we're, ju- we're just getting hints that, yes, you, that, that there is a history here. And, you know, and they do, you know, and, and we know, you know, Rogue's power is one that if she touches someone, you know, they, she absorbs their abilities and whatnot. And Eric is actually, you know, and so, so they do have that moment there where she t- takes off the glove and he does hold her hand. And and so, you, you, you know, you know, that, that those are the you know, direct, but also a little subtle nods to like to their history. Right, right. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and then to to go to the other love triangle, um, we got we got Nathan Charles Summers born. Yeah, Cable. Cable. Um, and so how how quickly will he grow? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's that's somewhat of a joke, but also kind of seriously, like how. How how fast do you think we're gonna be stuck with X Men taking care of a little baby? <laughs> <laughs> I just figured some Tommy Wimey stuff was gonna happen in the grown up Cable show. <laughs> I mean, we, he did show up in the in the anim, the, the original animated series. So, uh, but I can't remember like like I said, it's it's been so long. I, I can't remember like all the all well, the ins and outs uh, of it. Yeah. I mean, something something did happen, t- timey wimey, because by the end of the episode, the, we got a, a Jean Grey knocking at the door, mm-hmm. and a Jean Grey standing on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and so something really did happen, and that's something that I do appreciate. Um, and I know we're only two episodes in, mm-hmm. but both episodes ended with a question ended with a point of suspense that I feel as though in other shows that we've watched and we've watched animated shows. I mean, Mm -hmm. we we haven't returned to invincible, but we we got it on the back burner. It's brewing. We'll get there eventually. (laughs) And, and I, I feel like story structure these days, they, they want to wrap up everything. Yeah. And, and then when they don't, I mean, we saw this especially in the late great Arrowverse sagas that that have done their time and come to rest. Mm-hmm. Superman and Lois, we'll get yep. to you eventually too later this year. Yep. Um, but they they ask a question, but it's never, it's not hidden the same way these mm-hmm. last two episodes of X Men ninety seven have. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know what it is, but I I hope they keep that up. So I hope they keep that up and maybe just raise up some of the subtleness. Like, like you know, you the writer has to know that how nostalgic this show is. So majority of their audience is going to be like the millennials. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> millennials so, and 40 and 50 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. So and millennials. Yeah. 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 So, so why dumb it down? Why? Yeah. Wh- who are you fooling? Yeah. Who are you see, fooling? See, I don't know if it's so much a dumbing down, but I think, and maybe it's like you said, it's just because we are adults, and 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 and, and we're just more discerning viewers than the than the ones out there saying woke, woke, woke. But I mean, X Men has always been woke. You know, you know, and we talked about this show, these types of shows before, where they're allegories of like real things you know real yeah. real life things and and so a lot of the some of the some of the things that they're uh, touching on are are things that you know, when the show aired in the 90s like for example gay rights and stuff when the show was aired you know people same-sex couples couldn't even get married i mean it, it was after the show went off the air that that became law and and so some of you know but so i think some of those things do your, to your point, we are more sophisticated now, as far as viewers, and some think some of these things that we used to take for granted do sometimes feel a little heavy-handed uh, in, in in this in this show. Um, but you know, but but at the same time, they do also, even though they may be may feel heavy-handed sometimes, but 
But I think the cool thing about it, too, is it's still making me think as a viewer, like, oh, you know, yeah, we resolved this this one issue, but there's still a lot of this other issue that is still still a problem. And I think that's what's the genius about the X-Men is and why it's had such longevity, because whatever generation you're in and whatever social, socioeconomic or uh, you know, civil rights or whatever issue it is of, the, of that of that time period. These characters in the in the allegorical sto- storytelling that is that is used to to explore these issues resonates, and I think that's that's why like whenever like the whole thing with with we don't do mutant babies here, I mean you know that goes back to you know clearly back to the the water you know civil rights as far as black folks can't go into certain places. So mm-hmm. I think you know so and you know and you can and you can fast forward it now to like with well, bathrooms. I mean so that's why it's just like. You know why I think the show really works on so many levels, and why it speaks to so many people. Yeah, definitely. Um, anything else before we head into Fallout? No, I uh, no. I'm, I'm really I'm glad that we are we're finally here. Like I said last week, and uh, can't looking forward to, to continuing on uh, the journey with with these characters. All right. Well, that brings us to Fallout Season 1, Episode 5, The Past. Everyone wants to save the world. I don't know what it is about this show, but Mm -hmm. I swear, like, these these episodes we're going to talk about tonight were really good. Really good. And yet, still, I do not think about this show a single moment after I'm done watching it. (laughs) It's the weirdest thing. And so I'm always stuck here like, what happened in this episode? Oh, yeah. Okay, this is the episode where basically um, we we start off with with Thaddeus and um, Maximus. And, well, Thaddeus learns the truth and then immediately is like, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I'm still in the head. And and Maximus, who still doesn't understand the way his suit works, get tra- gets trapped in his suits only for very conveniently Lucy to show up. <laughs> <laughs> now we're getting started. But it's yeah. just it's so funny to me. Like, these are good episodes, and yet yeah. I still... There's the, it, it doesn't linger with me. Nothing has lingered with me. Yeah, well, I, that's that's a fair thing to say. And honestly, I when I when I, the only time you know I watch the episode and and I enjoy it. And and you're right. I mean, this series has with each episode gets progressively better. And but I don't think about them again until it's time for us to talk about them. And the thing that the through line for this episode for me was trust issues. And, and that, that was, that was sort of, that was my overall thought with, with what, like, as you noted from Thaddeus and, and, and Maximus there, Lucy and encountering Maximus. And then of course the, in the, in the storyline going on in the vault itself with the election and whatnot. Yeah. I mean, Okay. So if you're going to sum it um sum it up in trust issues my my thing would be well yeah everyone should have a trust issue because Maximus is a liar okay yeah. Maximus has been lying and see now we're getting to the root of my issue with Maximus Mm. I need to understand why he's lying so much. <laughs> <laughs> and I need it to be a reason that I can sympathize with so that I can I can accept his lies as a viewer who's seeing all sides of it. Because I'm just like, because for a moment, when when Lucy first shows up and helps him out, and then she immediately sees through his act. Mm-hmm. Which I'm like, thank you, writers, for not making Lucy look stupid. And then within the moment I said that, within that span of time, he she suddenly accepted another lie from him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Jesus, <laughs> stop it. Yeah, well, you know, she can't. Well, but I, you know, that to that point though, I'm glad that that, that she still like still has that naivety from the vault. You know, because. Even after all, I don't know if it was naivety because she saw, she clearly understood that he was what he was going after yeah. too. It's exactly it, the same thing, but it was more that she thought in that instance there was nothing else that, like, she thought she had won that hmm. that little discourse, 
and that he wouldn't he doesn't have anything else to withhold from her. Yeah. So I don't know if it was naive naivety so much as just like, no, I called you on your bullshit. And she was like basking in that and and didn't go go further or continue to have someone yeah. of a guard. So maybe well, it's a mixture of both. Maybe it's a mixture of both. Yeah, I was going to say it's, it's, it's still that lack of street smarts. Mm hmm. Right, uh, right. Yeah. yeah well, it, but then again, I don't know how much street smarts Maximus has because the kid got locked in his suit. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's another issue too. But <laughs> locked in his suit. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he's he's not he's he's clearly not the sharpest uh, the knife in the drawer there for sure. Um, and he's not very street smart because I mean, I don't know. Like, so. Here's where I was just like, whenever he opened up to Thaddeus. Uh-huh. I mean, I was just like, I, I mean, I get where the writers were going with that, but at the same time, I'm just like, why? I mean, uh, it did again, and maybe it gets back to my point, it's just the lack of street smarts. Like, this guy is brotherhood now, through and through. And you right. really think he's going to, like, just as soon as you reveal who you are, and given that they have these rules about, you know, as far as succession and knighthood and all that kind of stuff, he's just going to be like, oh, cool, bro. Especially after you branded him. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, it's also Thaddeus is looking at him like as a squire. He's like, now I'm an accomplice. Yeah. And and you clearly haven't thought this through because I can appreciate how Thaddeus pointed out. Oh, what do you think is going to happen when they figure it out? And then Maximus yeah. clearly hasn't really thought that completely yeah. through. Exactly. And then suddenly you're like, okay, so Thaddeus, get out, get out while you can and yeah. claim innocence because if Thaddeus motivations totally make sense. And I guess the more you're, we're talking about this, I don't even know if it's a lack of street smarts. However, what they're doing with Maximus is making you view him as naive mm -hmm. as you do Lucy. Yeah. The difference, though, is Maximus is from the surface world, and we're supposed to believe all surface world people are smart. <laughs> <In extent. laughs> or, yeah. or are better, more understandable and yeah. have better survival instincts That's it. than those who come from the vault. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but they do make for a good pairing, even though even though Lucy tries to show that she knows how to how to like de de stress the situation. It only leads to Maximus getting shot, which I am so glad. <laughs> I watched that scene and I was just like, oh, wow. And then five minutes later, they're just walking away. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second. Maximus clearly got shot. Right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw. Yeah. We saw the impact of blood flying out of his arm. Yeah. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for for a moment there, there was this gap of a period of time where I'm like, wait a second. Maximus got shot. Got what shot. is happening? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's I'm glad they, that they they brought that back, and then that's yeah. what led them to going into the building, which they inadvertently end up in the happiest place on the earth, which is another vault. Yep. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But they'll also, to your point, one of the things we thought when as you were we were talking about surface folks, and you know, there's been hinting around the whole the whole shady sands issue. Oh, shady sands. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, and you know, of course, and, and to your, you know, and, and really juxtaposing Lucy, you know, and the Vault Thirty Three dwellers as far as their whole reclamation day, and then you know, and 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 Shady Sands being that, well, at least prior to the bomb getting dropped on it, you know, being that ideal world on, on the surface, and Maximus coming, you know, coming from that world, so as a little boy, so. Because we, you know, we they keep flashing back to the scene of the Brotherhood rescuing him out of out of the um, frit refrigerator or whatever he was in that you know shielded him from the from the blast. So you're right. I mean, I, I like the, like you said how both of them were sheltered in their own own way, and now we're seeing how it manifested in itself um, as they are you know, on this quest to find the head. 
Yep. And while they are doing that on the surface world, meanwhile, Vault 33 Norm continues to investigate what happened in Vault 32 um, and figure out that they were trying to go get into Vault 31. There's an election day happening, which then he um, finds out has been rigged for centuries. <laughs> 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 so yeah. the same number, just the same results, just a different winner every yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you want to rig an election, this is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, and and it just and it leads to more a lot of vault trust issues, as Will pointed out. Um, and Norm really not understanding what well, I feel like he always figures out things just a little too late. Yeah. Um, now is, oh, this is the, um, we do, I think towards the end of the episode, um, after the rigged election, uh, they, it gets announced by the new overseer, Betty, that she's, um, initiating a resettling campaign. So some will be moved into vault 32 to start anew while others will stay in their current vault. Um, and and did it, am I remembering correctly? Both Norm and Chet got moved into the old vault, right? Um, I, I can't recall no, if they no, like the, the, Norm did because Norm went in there and he saw yeah. the paint job. Right, right. They both went in. Yeah, I think that's. I can't remember if they got permanently resettled, but they did see Vault Thirty Two because, and to your point about figuring out things too late. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so between the time that they went. And, you know, there was the whole cleanup of of the place. And so, right. yeah, so that was, yeah. so that doesn't even add to the. said down with, it was, there was spray paint that said down with management, which right. is a hint at something that happens in the next episode. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For, definitely for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I have to just say it, like, I, I think I mentioned this last week. Anybody who's watching Fallout. Do it in, in groups of two because totally. these episodes just continue. <laughs> yes, they really do. They yeah. really do. Don't, yeah. yeah. I mean, if you do one, two, three, I don't think you're going to have the full effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, they compliment. Yeah, these even numbered episodes like this, they definitely compliment each other very, very well. And, and of course, and then, you know, that last little bit that, uh, the, regarding the trust issues and two and, 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 Given the rigged elections, and you know, we we still have the outstanding question: what happened to you know to not to Norm's mom, but also her pit boy, which is her little little computer unit on her wrist. Uh, what happened to it? Seems like it was right. you know because it could lead to uh, probably it's connected to. You know, down with management and some of these other these other issues as far as uh, you know the, the vault dwellers um, being the from conspiracy surface. of it yeah. all yeah. yeah the conspiracy of it all because yeah. um, he has been informed that overseer Betty and his father buried his mom mm -hmm. and she when they buried her she still had her pit boy with her on her wrist yeah. now we know that that pit boy was used to access um, the the vault gate, the vault mm -hmm. entrance from the surface world that led to Vault 32's downfall. Yeah. Um, and now for any listeners who are um, following along, I'm going to quickly, a quick discrepancy um, or a quick statement. Um, I'm so sorry if I get the vaults confused. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have them right, but oh, you know, there's three of them. <laughs> yeah, no, you, 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 you're spot on. You, you have okay, not slipped yet. Okay. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Closure was the word I was looking for. Um, but all right, that brings us into episode six, the trap, which we didn't get any of the ghoul in the previous episode, and we start immediately with a flashback. Um, the tagline of this episode is what happens when the ranchers have more power than the sheriff. Um, and honestly, I want to say 75% of the ghouls storyline in this episode is all told through flashback. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. With, with good reason. And I, I can appreciate that because I didn't want to watch 20 minutes of him just being dragged through the desert. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Did not, <laughs> did not want to watch it. Yeah. Um, we, we start with a Galaxy News update that is hosted by Cooper Howard in Vault 4, which ironically is the vault in present day that Lucy and Maximus ends up in. Coincidence? I think not. Um, and and basically, he's just he's just pitching. He's pitching, quote unquote, safety for the future in the vault with mm-hmm. Vault Tech. Purchase your residence today. Um, and and then that leads us to some encounters with Bud Askins, a Bud Askins, which is a name that I um, will forever remember. <laughs> <laughs> And and this is that tie into the previous episode, but he he tells he tells Cooper time is the ultimate weapon, management. Mm-hmm. So time management or something. Um, but but what what do you think about Bud and some of these early scenes of the ghouls flashbacks that we're seeing? It really expanded the lore, I think, uh, mm-hmm. as far as just. Seeing how things were before the the, the bomb dropped and the war started, uh, and uh, so you know, so I thought it was a good episode in that regard, just to to really flesh out um, the ghouls' backstory and 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 really like you know we were all wondering you know we see we see saw he was a Western actor and uh, you know he had a wife daughter and and really see America as it was prior to the war and, and the McCarthyism that was their version of the McCarthy red scares, you know, in, in there in, in Hollywood and how that was all a folding and, and the, uh, you know, the vault tech and, and, and Bud Askins, so like, yeah, like you said, I'll never forget him, but also um, how, how the economy and, and the, and the, sort of military complex industrial complex is sort of unfolding in, in that alternate world uh and and, and who was you know and, and get into some of these deeper questions like who's really profiting from the the idea you know, of of possibly bringing us to the brink of war and 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 and, and Coop, cooper talking with his wife about you know some of the selections as far as you know dogs being in the vaults and 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 how they were work. She was doing these jobs to sort of work their way up, you know, work their way into a, a better vault. <laughs> and, right. Yeah, and 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 also as as we get later in the episode too, and, and learning more about the uh, Vault Four uh, settlers, um, you know, when Maximus and Lucy you know, f- fall into it, um, you know, we we see a lot of the folks there who who are mu- mutated from from the radiation and stuff from the war. So. You know, it, 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 you know, there's definitely like tie-in to to that, and and then to Cooper's um, discussion about when he was, you know, fighting the wars in Alaska, and, and some of the, you know, faulty equipment that they had, and um, you know, and it brings into question in some of the vaults. So it was it was a lot going on in this episode that I really really liked. Right, right. I I I from the get go was just always curious about him and his wife. Mm-hmm. Um, because they had teased it early line. I'm pretty sure in the first episode, right before the drop bomb drops, there was even a line that is said that I get, I got the impression him and his wife weren't together at that moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, and so we're basically watching their relationship dissolve over this issue. Yeah. Um, and, and him qu- starting to question, um, the, the true nature of vault um, and then he gets he gets told by a friend of his um, or informed that Voltec has a fiduciary responsibility to make sure it doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. And um, and he gets given a card to go to a meeting, which has all McCarthyism all over it. Um, it's very good metaphor and allegory yeah. to to that era and that time. Um, they're doing a really good job of of the flashbacks being very period based, but yeah. still every something's a little off at the same time. Um, much like how present day it it feels like present day, yet mm-hmm. at the same time something's just a little bit off. Yeah. Yeah. Or like- or like more is off 
and but there's still this nostalgic apart that that's what yeah. i was trying to say more is off yeah. in present day while there's this small bit of nostalgic like oh my god these yeah. these are actual people yeah um so so yeah i agree with you like overall there's a lot to unfold about this and i can appreciate the little little breadcrumbs um and and i think all of the the escalation that has unfolded over the last six episodes between Barb and um, Barb and Cooper has just been great because we we clearly see have seen their shared love for one another and mm -hmm. their daughter, mm -hmm. which which there's a reference and he is definitely still searching for Janie. Yep. I was also wrong about Moldova, but <laughs> <laughs> Moldova Moldova. Um, but we we do get some connection. I was I was also not completely wrong to an extent. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right in the sense that someone from his time period made it, but it was just yeah, it right. Was just, Which it was somebody else? Was, but it was a connection. It was who he yeah. met at the meeting. So yeah, I and and you know, to going back to Bud, there's there's more people mm -hmm. from the past. Yeah. than we even realize there are more people because time is ultimate weapon as long as you can manage it and so it just took me right back what what show do you think as soon as they brought up time i uh, i was like oh i know what they're doing here it's a very recent show will let's see time time um three body problem oh yes yes the, the, he, he was the, oh, yes, uh, the, uh, the yeah uh yeah. what's yeah yeah yeah, I, I know. Yeah, he he was also trying to figure out a way that he could freeze himself, himself for yep. 400 years so he could meet the aliens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Spoiler alert for a three body problem. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, time. <laughs> um, So so that I honestly first thought that popped in my head. I'm like, yeah. oh, that seems familiar. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so so to go back to Ghoul and Moldaver, basically in present day, we end his his drug out journey mm -hmm. to where we meet Surreal, who has appointed himself a sheriff of sorts. Yep, um, and he has no. Yeah, he's yeah he's yeah he's yeah, yeah, he yeah. was yeah yeah he, he and Ghoul definitely have a history there for sure. Yeah yeah, and he's the sheriff and. He, he heard about some of the stuff that the ghoul was getting into, wanted to lay down the law or at least like strut his stuff mm -hmm. in front of his dear old ghoulish friend. Um, and that's where we get the reference to Janie yep. or Barb. There is a chance he was talking about Barb, too, because yep. Barb could have certainly gotten herself into one of the quote unquote good vaults. Good so. vaults, yeah. Yeah. So I I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll see in a very sad flashback that Janie's a lost cause, but he's still in the hunt for Barb. Yeah. So so yeah. um and then he turns and sees a a picture and it's Moldave Mold Moldaver. Mm -hmm. Um and and he he says, "Wow, she 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 looks a bit or she's not as quite as I remember her." Or yeah. he says something along the lines of she She's a little bit different than when I first met her, and and it turns out he first meets her in in the flashback because she's what appears to be leading the meeting yeah. against Vault Tech. Yep. Um. So so very good parallel. Um. And so we're gonna start at the end of the Lucy Maximus <laughs> <laughs> because okay, I just want to say this. My one gripe is. As much as I appreciate this whole reveal sequence of both past surface level Mold Moldaver and the and Coop, and then present day Lucy in a weird cult, people are naked, people are drinking blood, or stuff is happening, yeah, yeah. ritual, and then they're basically praying to a portrait of Moldaver. The, the flame lady or a lady of flame or whatever. It just went on too long. They should have cut like a good two, three minutes. Like yeah. I was like, I, because 
it, you know it's too long when it doesn't take you till the end of the sequence to figure out what the reveal is. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, or- yeah, it just, I halfway through, I was like, oh, it's Moldaver, and oh, freaky. But I'm like, why are we still doing this? Yeah, it, it, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, the tension was uh, definitely, I, I think they were trying to, it, it, it went too long because the tension they had built up kind of dissipated whenever the reveals. Exactly. Like, oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Where it wasn't as shocking because you'd yeah. already figured it out and kind of moved on in your mind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, what's the big deal? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's like, oh, okay. Makes sense. Now, you know, I was already start. I was already starting to like, for me, I was like, okay, now let's, I was moving on to the next episode. <laughs> as far right. as like, yeah. Yeah, instead of like being wild by the reveal, it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, I was I was sitting there like, so after they move like reveal it's Moldaver, they're gonna explain the nudity that's happening, right? We're gonna get some kind yeah. of explanation yeah. because that was also unnecessary. That was very I, gr- I did feel it was I felt it was gratuitous, yeah. I did yeah, feel it. Yeah. yeah, it just didn't feel like they had to go that far. Yeah. Um, and it was sad because the first half of this episode, or the first half of the, the Lucy and Maximus in Vault Four, mm. I I loved because yeah. it felt like Guardians of the Galaxy. It did. And I know, like, I feel like way back when when we saw the first trailer, I I think I immediately said that comparison. I have not made that reference up until this episode, but that first half of these two in the vault, and and them starting on opposite end of their perspective of what's really happening Mm -hmm. to 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 like cross paths and move on the exact opposite ends by the end of the episode was really good it was was. Um, and and you know what i for the first time maximus made me a little bit proud because i would have stayed if they had given me a robe too you know like come on they gave him a robe and slippers yeah so he stayed. Yeah. <laughs> Caviar, <You> got. <laughs> yeah. He's got. Yeah, he's getting nice meals. There, yeah, it's like, oh, it's, I'm living, living like living life on the hog here. Yeah, it was really the cafeteria scene that yeah. did it for me. Where I'm like, this is so Guardians. There's just something about it. I'm like this, and it's not even Guardians. It's just the the first yeah. movie of Guardians because yeah. I swear in that prison there was a similar cafeteria scene. There was a, yeah, it had that vibe for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so we're when, so we're shown pretty early on that they're held in a cell called test subjects, mm-hmm. and then that leads to Lucy realizing that everyone is deformed to an extent. Yeah. So, yeah. what do you? So, do you think it was just that, um, the radiation, like their vault was broken, and that led? Yeah. The defaulted the, the faulty vaults, it goes to what Cooper, you know, with the whole vault tech and and butt ass skins and you know, whenever he was like, talking about his mil- with his military gear with the I guess the prior battle suits that they had back in the day. Um, you know, it, 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 to me it was like and and also the bar, you know, mentioning to to Cooper how you know we want to get in the good vault, the management vault. And and, and so Basically, you know, these are all military contractors <laughs> and, and, you know, and sometimes, you know, the government contracting, sometimes, you know, you go with the lowest bidder. So some of the product is really, really good. Some of it can be kind of, you know, kind of defective. No. And so, yeah. So no, I think that was tying all those, that was tying all those things in together into a cohesive, like, through line with this with this particular episode as far and to me that that really made made this level episode go next level to me because they're pulling all these connections together yeah see i feel like there was also something said about scientists Mm -hmm. and how a lot of them are scientists and so i think to an extent because when when lucy inevitably goes to level 12 yeah we 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 see a lot of mad science like oh. experiments. Yep, we saw we saw yeah the golfer yeah. Uh, so several I, things yeah. I I think to an extent you're right, but I also think they were playing at both sides of this, where it's also like when 
when scientists are in charge and their need to question and continue poking at things like they're going to do that i mean one of the first scientists that we saw and met was wilzig yeah and there was something not right about him (laughs) yeah well that lab that was the brotherhood lab and you know one of the things we didn't mention in the prior episode was um you know with lucy basically talking to the um the, did you talk to Maximus? Like, you know, the Brotherhood's goal is to like get pre war tech, you know, finding pre war tech and what was it? Keep pre war tech? I'm, I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was just basically, um, you know, I, I, I guess to your point, it's just like you know, everybody has, you know, there's some mixed agendas here. And I think even the vaults, too, you know, going back to the very, you know, whatever we, we learned at the, 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 you know, with the triad with the vaults, I mean, 31, 32, and 33. There, there seems to be some social, social engineering, and 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 and, and you know, and, and and the whole breeding, you know, we with Lucy in the very first episode getting married off, you know, so they could be breeding stock. So right, yeah. So there's, there, you're spot on there that there is some experimentation going on here. Yeah, like, um, and and so what we also learn is that in vault four there are a lot of surface mourn people because they there's this whole history which i'm sure if i actually took the time i'm sure i could find the full timeline of fallout yeah oh yeah yeah all <laughs> the games. Get confused yeah <laughs> so, so it, what is current year what has happened when did the bomb drop? and just how long things have happened so it sounds like reclamation day did happen and something you said to me, it happened far back enough that Maximus, as probably a four, what, a seven-year-old? Yeah, yeah. Was, was found in the rubbish, so, which indicates that he actually could have been born in a vault, so. Yeah. he could have been born in a vault, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it was the whole new California Republic, because, you know, they, they did, you know, at least he did see yep, that all flex. the... Yeah, the flag, you know, we, which we, we, we've seen the flag in like credits and other things throughout the series. And now we really get the full history of the new California Republic. And, you know, it was like 2077. Yeah. And, and then that's uh, when it fell. Um, and then, uh, you know, they have the date of where they are now. So, you know, on, on the chalkboard as far as when the event occurred. So, it was like I said, there was a lot, there was a lot of plot packed in the show. And, you know, love it of listeners who played the game, you know, who, who could like fill in the gaps as far as some of the stuff because I never played it. Uh, you know, where this falls into, in, I guess, four previous games, five previous games or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. There, there's yeah. a lot of games. There's yeah. a lot of games. And my bro, all my brother who has played some of the game yeah. has said is that there's a lot of good Easter eggs. Yeah. sprinkled out but he hasn't he hasn't told me like oh they're following this trajectory or anything it, it i get the impression that they're pulling from because there are so many ver- um there are so many installments of this game yeah. and it's never been a and it's more free form right. that that they're pulling bits and pieces from each of them yeah, yeah. And, yeah so, and this is only the beginning. Like, even yeah. though these two episodes did a lot, I still feel like we're just getting exposition. Yeah. It's just, it's a lot of history, a lot of like people taking shape, the past taking shape, us like getting oriented. And it, and it just, it continues very consistently, might I add you, mm-hmm. to just be, feel much more, much like a prologue. Yeah. And I think the real story unfolds in season two. Yeah, 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 and yeah, you're yeah, you're right. I mean, I think that that that's the case, and and really, you know, unlike The Last of Us, where it was a one to one adaptation of well, not one to one, but you know, it's an adaptation of the game itself, bringing it live action. This is just you know, this is the way the Fallout games have unfolded, which is their next chapters in in the larger in a larger story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anything else you want to add in? I think I got hit all of the beats that I wanted to with Fallout. 
No, I, I, I no, I, I think we, we, um, I think we touched on everything in the in this episode. Um, both right. of them, like I said, they were they were really really good, and as you said earlier, do do them in bunches, folks, listeners. If you want to binge it, binge two at a time. And on that note, Will, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me on Twitter, also known as X, at Will M. Polk, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And you can find me there, too, at there too <laughs> at SJ Belmont, S-J-B-L-M-O-N-T. Please follow our crew on Twitter at Scene and Nerd. Find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and threads at Scene underscore N underscore Nerd. And visit our website, www.sceneandnerdpodcast.com. But most importantly, rate, follow, and comment on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. Good night, geek out. You're welcome. Hey.